So in a previous video, we worked with this code that makes an animation of a sphere moving to the right. So we create the sphere, we call it my sphere, um, and then we set up this counter i, and we, then we go over this loop. And basically, uh, the loop's gonna continue as long as i is less than or equal to 1,000, which means it's gonna go from one to 1,000 because we're adding one to i each run of the loop here. We set the number of frames per second, and then each frame, we move the sphere by an amount dx. So we change its uh, we change its position uh, by one unit along the, or 0.01 units along the x direction. And it makes something that looks like this. And the thing moves along to the right. Uh, we saw that it will automatically zoom out. I can even zoom out manually. It moves along to the right. It's not terribly fast because we made the step size kind of small. So let's actually increase that by uh, a factor of 10 just to get it moving a little bit faster. And it's gonna continue moving along to the right. Um, oops, I turned off the scale, I guess. Um, it's gonna continue moving along to the right until basically we run out of counters. But let's suppose I didn't want it to do that. Let's suppose I wanted it to turn back around at some point. Um, like, let's suppose I put a wall in place somewhere. Uh, let's make a wall. Wall equals box, position equals uh, vector. Let's say we place this out. Um, let's say, uh, let's say two units to the right, comma zero, comma zero, and we'll give it a size of. Let's see. We'll make it narrow in the x direction, a zero point one. We'll make it uh, tall in the y direction. Let's make that one, and let's make it wide in the z direction. Let's make that one, and let's give it a color. Uh, let's make it color dot white. There we go. So what I can do there is I can put in a wall. Cool, and the ball is moving toward the wall. Of course, the ball doesn't know that there's a wall there, right? It doesn't know that there's something it's supposed to be bouncing off because this is just a visual thing, right? So I have to be able to tell the ball, if I wanted to bounce off that wall, I have to be able to tell it to turn around when it reaches the wall. Meaning I need to be able to change the behavior inside this loop based on the location of the ball. I need to have some kind of condition. And that, like we saw last time, is exactly what an if block is for. So this is the code we worked with in the previous video. Uh, we were working with these conditions, looking at the value of A, and basically we changed the code's behavior based on the value of A. Well, I wanna do the same thing here I want to look at the position of A. Let's clear a little bit of space for ourselves here. Um, so let's say I make this. If I want to look at the position of the sphere, so I look at my underscore sphere dot position dot X, just like we've got here. And basically I want to look for where this thing is about to collide into the wall. So I want to look for whether this becomes greater than or equal to two. Uh, the, the wall is located at two, so I wanna check for whether this thing uh, reaches two. And then basically I want to turn it around. So I need to have it going in the opposite direction. So the thing that determines what direction it's going is dx. So I can turn dx into the negative of itself and make the ball bounce and go back over to the left. So this line 13 here, dx equals negative dx, is only going to happen if my sphere.pause.x becomes greater than or equal to two. So it should behave normally up until then, control two to run. It's gonna behave normally until then. Boop, and then it comes into contact with the wall and then it turns around. Now a couple things happened there that we should notice. One is it actually went into the wall a little bit. Um, we'll talk about why that is in a second, but the other thing is this thing continues on to the left I need to have a, something on the left to keep it bouncing back and forth. So let's build a second wall. Uh, we can call this one wall two now. Oops, uh, there we go. Copy, paste, call this one wall two. Let's give it the same dimensions, except we're gonna place it over to the left. And now here's the fun thing about this. There are two ways that I could set up this condition. I want it to bounce off the right, I want it to bounce off the left. I could set it up where I just recreate this. Oops. Let's delete it entirely, that's a good idea. I could set it where I recreate this and just change this condition to be 
less than or equal to negative two. I could set it up that way and that will work fine. That will accomplish our purpose of making the ball bounce back and forth between the walls. Here it's checking for, here it hits the, the positive two trigger. Here it's gonna hit the negative two trigger. Here it's gonna hit the positive two trigger. See, that works, that, that setup works just fine. There's still the little visual issue of the ball is embedding itself into the wall a little bit. Um, but it looks a little inefficient because I've got this same command written twice. I've got the, the same dx equals negative dx written twice. I can make this a little more compact, a little more computationally efficient if I expand this condition. The way I can do that is by grouping this condition into a cluster, then taking this condition as a cluster. Let's do control X to cut it, let's paste it in here. And then what I can do is I can use an or in here. So you notice or turns purple, which means vPython recognizes it as a word. As a word. Um, and what I'm looking for here is for whether this is true or this is true. And now this is an inclusive or, uh, meaning this can be true or this can be true or both can be true. Now we know that uh, the thing is not gonna be greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to negative two. So that's a moot distinction right now, but there may be other scenarios where it comes up. So I just mentioned that now, note that this is an inclusive or. And then I can delete all of this stuff. I don't need either of those. So this is saying if it reaches the right edge or if it reaches the left edge, flip the sign of dx because it's the same command either way. Let's run this and watch it happen. Still not sure what that pause is there for at the beginning or what's causing it. Um, so here we bounce back and forth to the left and the right. It's able to check whether either of those is true. Um, so as long as one of them is true, it's going to turn itself around. And if you want to look for a scenario where both conditions are true, you put in an and. Of course, that's never going to happen because the, a, a number cannot be greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to negative two. That, that's a non-overlapping range. All right, in our last couple minutes, let's address this issue of the ball embedding itself into the wall. You can even see it's, it's puncturing through. So it is turning around. It's just not turning around at the right moment. And the reason is because when we're comparing the positions of these two, we're comparing the center positions, right? So it's not going to turn around until the center of the ball reaches two, which is also the center of the wall. So I need to adjust my number two here a little bit. Um, and let's actually calculate that a little bit. What I can do is I can, let's define a thing called edge and it's going to be, let's see, it's going to be the boxes position or wall one dot position. Actually, let's call this edge one. It's going to be wall one's position uh, dot X minus half of its size. Remember, this is the location of the center, which means the edge is out a little bit more. Uh, so minus the uh, wall one dot size dot x divided by two. And then let's go with edge two wall position, uh, wall two position dot x minus wall two size dot x over two. So now we're looking at the edge of those, um, the edge of the walls. I still have a problem here with the fact that this is the center of the sphere. So the first piece I can change is for this to be edge one and for this to be edge two. Notice I don't need the negative on there anymore because it's already going to be a negative number. But I need to adjust the my sphere dot position dot x. So I need this to be over to the right a little bit. So plus my sphere dot radius. And I need this spot to be minus my sphere dot radius. And the reason this one's plus and this one's minus is because here we're looking at the right uh, tip of the sphere. Here we're looking at the left tip of the sphere. So we've made this a little more complex, but this is going to fix that visual issue in the animation. Boom. Okay, let's get a zoom out. Let's watch this thing here. It should just be, there we go. We get edge to edge contact there and that's what triggers the uh, the bouncing, boom, there we go. And you can, you can adjust this however you like it. You can give this thing a two-dimensional velocity and set up a, a wall on the top and a wall on the bottom. You can give it a front and a back and have it going around um, 
uh, in all three directions. Um, there's a lot of fun you can do with these conditionals in animations. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.